Welcome to the Characteristics of Living Things, a video by Mr. Drollinger. Whether you're a duck in a pond or a turtle at the bottom of the ocean, all living things have a lot in common. This video is going to go over the characteristics of living things. All organisms are made of small building blocks called cells. A cell is a basic unit of structure and function in organisms. Cells are so small that you need a microscope to see them. Some organisms are described as being unicellular. Unicellular is a word that can be broken apart into its two parts. Let's take a look at the prefix uni. You might have heard the word unicycle. It's just a bicycle with one tire. And you also might have heard of the word unibrow. A guy with a unibrow has one eyebrow. So in both of those words, we saw the prefix uni being used as the word one. Uni just means one. So a one-celled organism is unicellular. The word unicellular just means a one-celled organism. Now, let's take a look at the next word, multicellular. This word can be broken apart into its parts, just like unicellular. The first part of the word is multi. A word you might have heard before is multimillionaire. It's a guy with many millions of dollars. Another word you might have heard before is multicolored. This girl has multicolored hair, or hair with a lot of different colors. So in both of these examples, the word multi meant many. The same thing holds true for the word multicellular. Multicellular means many cells. The next characteristic of all living things is that they contain similar chemicals. Water is the most abundant chemical in all of living things. Humans contain water plants contain water, so do bacteria and fungi. Water is necessary for life. There's a few more things that all living things have in common. The next one is the fact that every living thing must use energy. That is snow! No, it's not! It's an <laughs> What you just saw were examples of our next characteristic of organisms. What you were seeing was an example of something called stimulus and response. The next characteristics of all living things is that we respond to our surroundings. Let's think about this together. On a hot day like we had this summer, the first thing your body does is sweat like this guy. So, the temperature caused our body to sweat. So in this example, the temperature is known as the stimulus. And what our body does is known as the response. A stimulus is just a change in our surroundings. And our response is a change in our behavior. So in our example, the temperature was the stimulus or simply a change in our surroundings. And this sweaty guy was his response or his change in behavior. Another example is when an eyeball is stimulated by light. People shiver when they get cold. But probably the coolest example of stimulus and response happens in plants. What you're seeing here is the plants are actually responding to the sun's light. Plants bend so they can absorb the sun's rays. Their stimulus is the sun and their response is how they bend towards the light. The next characteristic of all living things is that all organisms grow and develop. 
There's a really easy example of this, and it's the example of a frog. A frog starts life as an egg, develops into a tadpole, and then turns into an adult. This change in the life of a frog is known as development, or when an organism becomes more complex. The final characteristic of organisms is the ability to reproduce. To reproduce means make offspring of the same kind. For example, humans have baby humans. I hope you enjoyed the video about the characteristics of all living things. Remember, all living things are made of cells, contain similar chemicals, use energy, respond to their surroundings, grow and develop, and lastly, reproduce. Thanks for watching.